Pa, pa, pa. Pa. Distinguished guests, uh, we wish you a warm welcome and, of course, good morning. Uh, today we will focus on uh, mobility and uh, multimodality, in particular the impact of large-scale connectivity project. And uh, it's my great honor and pleasure to invite to the stage the moderator of the panel, Mr. Franz Zipic, coordinator of the Priority Area 1B, secretary at the Ministry of Infrastructure, Slovenia. And please give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Vanet. I was never introduced by such a charming lady. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Vam rečem še po slovensko. Dobar dan in dobrodošli. Hvala lepa. Thank you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. Good morning to the participants and good morning to distinguished speakers who take time to tell us something about the projects that are going on and are adding and has an added value for the whole macro region. So can I ask you to take the floor, take the chairs? First, No, no. Yeah, yeah. 
So we have from our side Mr. Mildrak Poredica, uh, working for the public enterprise Putevi Serbia, which means Roads of Serbia. Then Mr. Zoran Andrić in the middle is assistant ministry at the Ministry of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Then Mr. Goran Legac coming from Croatia, uh, project leader of some great, great projects and one he's going to present you today and maybe mention also the others. And then we have also Helmut Adersberg, uh, minister, well, minister wor working as a consultant, now retired, but used to be uh, employed in the Ministry of Transport of the Austria and also working for the DG Move for some time. And then finally, our uh, Slovenian colleague, Mr. Kristian Novak, who is uh, part of the leading team of construction of the second railway track, Port of Koper to Divača. So, let's start. For the introduction, I would like to remind you that we are covering the priority area 1B, we dealing with the transport covering of the area of over 1 million square kilometers, which is approximately one quarter of the size of the European Union. There are 115 million inhabitants, and we have been, the transport has been split, in our priority area has, has been split in two parts. The first part is called 1A, and is dealing with navigation uh, on uh, continental rivers, on inland rivers, like Danube, Tisa, Sava, and so on, and is coordinated by Austria and Romania. And the second one, priority area 1B, rail, road, and air links, is chaired or coordinated by Slovenia and Serbia. So, what is the main objective of our work? To be really, really very brief, because we have today other things to discuss, is the aim to merge the EU and non-EU transport systems. As it was shown earlier, we have nine countries that belong to EU and five candidate countries to the EU. So we are fighting for full modal integration. It means that we do not distinguish road, rail, aviation, waterborne, if you like it, and so on. But we believe that the transport modes should cooperate to the benefit of people, of tourists, of businesses, of all of us. And then, of course, there are huge differences between the countries of the region. You can imagine, we have different culture, we have different history, we have many, many things different. So from the beginning of the Danube region in uh, Black Forest, Schwarzwald in Germany, to the Moldovian, Romanian, uh, Ukrainian uh, and uh, Romanian border, when the river goes into the Black Sea, there are differences in development. And we would like to narrow these gaps in order that we would have the same quality of infrastructure, same, let's say, uh, road safety, approximately the same air connectivity, and so on, and so on, not to be too long. So this is what we have in terms of roads. So can you imagine that there is the, the length of 880,000 kil kilometers of roads out of it more than 12,000 kilometers are motorways. What is the issue? The issue with roads is, the main issue is that we have not the same categorization. So when we all know when, what we are talking about the motorways, so at least two lanes in each direction, so four lanes, it's much more difficult to talk uh, about the other roads, like main roads and other regional roads. So this has been some uh, difficulties to make this kind of map. And this kind of map, also it is old, let's say approximately five years, it shows you the density of motorways in the region. When it comes to, opa, so, sorry, 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 sorry. When it comes to railways, the network has been historically very well 
uh, how should I say, developed, but it needs a lot of modernization, upgrading, and so on. So, for example, out of 67, almost 67,000 kilometers of railways, there are about 17,000 double track and less than 50% electrified. Again, you can see on this map the uh, bold red uh, lines represent double track electrified, which means again that it is a difference between the upper Danube River and the lower Danube River. This is, we are not going to talk today, but because we are covering air transport, I want to show you that we have a great number of airports. All airports are estimated, because we did not make our own study yet, are about 1,300. But it means everything. Every grass field, every, everything, everything. Out of it, uh, those that are really, let's say, international are around 50. And again, there is a case that we have uh, some very well and modern new airports. Like, for example, in near, nearing, uh, nearby Croatia, there is a new airport, very nice. However, they, the, the, the annual traffic of passengers is around two, three million, and it's still far for, to be reached. What they want to have, it is five million at least. Then Ljubljana Airport, which is a small airport with about one million passengers, has been modernized as well. Vienna Airport is one of the hubs, which is not a big hub like Frankfurt or Schiphol in Holland and so on, but still it is important. And the annual traffic, I think, is around uh, 20,000. While the Munich, for example, which is another, or in, in fact the only real hub in the region, is reaching about 15 million. So he, he, he's close to these figures. So I cannot but to say something also about the 10T network, Trans-European Network. And why I would like to stress it? Because majority of large projects are linked to this network. The there have been sub several regulations uh, related to the 10 network. However, the last revision was proposed by the Commission on, in, on December 2021. It has been amended in July 22 because of the situation in Ukraine, aggression on the Ukraine. And in this time, the Commission, together with the Council and Parliament, decided to propose a little bit different extended network to these countries. In particular, the connections to Belarus and Russia has been disconnected and uh, enforced or uh, made stronger the connections with Ukraine. What is also new, in past we have core network, which means the main, main line, and comprehensive network. The main uh, the core network should be completed by 2030 and the comprehensive by, uh, by 2050. Now, in this, re re uh, this uh, interim, in this revision, it is proposed that we would have extended core, which means that this should be uh, completed or implemented by 2040. So, and what is also new, before we know so-called uh, core network corridors and the rail freight corridor separated, because there has been a lot of uh, influence and pressure put to, for motor split, so, so, that, so that goods go from road to rail, and this is now in this new regulation merged. What is important for the Danube macro region, and what I am really happy is, that we have here a new core network corridor, which is now called, or will be now, once adopted, European Transport Corridor. And this is Western Balkans East Mediterranean Corridor that goes from Austria, Salzburg, and Wales Linz, all the way to Greece, and further on, even to Cyprus. The, 
we can talk a lot about it. We can have a session on this corridor on its own. So I will not prolong why it is uh, going to Cyprus, who, by the way, have no railway lines. <laughs> but the plan was that this uh, regulation will be adopted by Council and the European Parliament already this year. But as negotiations are going on, it looks like it will be in the first half of 24. So there is really a lot I can tell you or talk about transport, because everything we touch from roads, from railways, from airports, infrastructure, or transport services, public services, is very, very interesting. But we do not have time now, unless you will have later on when we have planned a discussion with you. So let us first listen to our distinguished colleagues. What are they going to say to us? And then feel free to put a question, or to me, or primarily to all of them. I will start with a dear colleague of mine who has been a co-coordinator on the Serbian part for almost 10 years, and we work on all these issues, Mr. Miodrag Poledica, before member of the Ministry of uh, Transport, but now one of the directors at the Public Enterprise Roads of Serbia. So Miodrag, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Franz. We, we were working together more than 10 years on this uh, uh, job as a private area coordinators, but we are still uh, in cooperation for many, let's say, reasons and uh, communications and actually friendship that we developed in, let's say, last 10, 12 years. Uh, as uh, Uh, today I work in uh, Public Enterprise Roads of Serbia, Deputy General Manager and Executive Director for uh, Strategic Planning and uh, Designing. What I would like to say through this uh, communication that I have with you is that uh, uh, in Serbia really we are trying to be a good partner in the region. Uh, our uh, goal to, to have good transport communication and connectivity with all uh, countries I would like to say that Serbia borders with uh, eight countries, four EU countries and four non-EU countries, and nevertheless we would like to have the best uh, transport uh, connections and connectivity with all countries, with all capitals and uh, uh, major cities. Uh, mm, uh, projects going, all projects going in that direction. I would like to say that uh, 2019 we finished one, uh, let's say, big uh, investment cycles regarding uh, road infrastructure, we completed uh, Corridor 10 and uh, we completed, uh, let's say, 130 kilometers uh, of the road between Belgrade to western part of Serbia, the, the city Čačak, and it is actually road to Montenegro. So 2019 we completed 350 kilometers of the full profile of the motorways and uh, now we have around 1,000 kilometers in operation of the motorways in Serbia. Uh, uh, there are several reasons why we are doing that. Uh, as I mentioned, we would like to have uh, the best connectivities in the region. The second reason is to reduce the travel and transit time. Uh, through several projects, we actually did it. And in several projects, we reduced double transit time through Serbia. Uh, that is one uh, uh, concrete uh, um, uh, way how we are doing. The second, uh, the second reason is to improve road safety. And for several projects, I give you the concrete numbers. Uh, uh, we are constructing not only the roads, we are uh, very, how to say, active in uh, railway transport as well. I'm working roads in Serbia, but in previous time, I was uh, nine years state secretary in the Serbian Ministry of Transport and Construction. And one of our, let's say, uh, biggest railway projects is construction of uh, High speed railway line between Belgrade to Hungarian border, and we finished last year first uh, sections around 80 kilometers. We bought uh, modern trains from uh, Switzerland, Stadel trains, and now we have transit time between uh, Belgrade to Novi Sad around 33 minutes, 80 kilometers. 
Now we have the construction of the second part of the of the high speed railway line between Novi Sad to Subotica, actually Hungarian border, additional 110 kilometers, and our uh, goal to finish by the end of next year. Uh, I would like to underline a few projects that we are very proud of. Uh, first project is actually finishing of uh, Belgrade bypass. We did it uh, and actually we put in the operation in June this year. Uh, comparing with the old road, actually we had uncompleted Belgrade bypass for many, many decades. Uh, traveling to the old road, we, we actually spent it 45, 50 minutes in the best case, some 40 kilometers. Now we reduced double. Now we passed Belgrade bypass through bypass around 20, 22 minutes. That is first uh, first uh, figure. The second figure is uh, uh, regarding uh, road safety. Uh, now on the Belgrade bypass, we have almost double more uh, double more uh, vehicles comparing to the the same time uh, last year. Daily we have more than 40,000 to 50,000 vehicles on the Belgrade bypass. And the last year, in the same time, we had around 20,000 vehicles. But the, the numbers of the traffic accidents, we keep on the same level. Daily, we have three to four traffic accidents. This year, when we have double more uh, traffic, comparing to the last year. Um, also, the second project that I would like to, to underline is that uh, competition on 130 kilometers between Belgrade to Čačak. That is a road to Montenegro. Uh, we, in previous time, before the opening of the motorway, we traveled, uh, let's say, some 150 kilometers in 2.53 hours. Now we opened the parallel road, actually the motorway. We now we have transit time around one hour, one hour 50 minutes. So we reduced transit time more than, 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 than double. And regarding the road safety, actually in previous period, three years, looking to the three, uh, three years period before the opening of the motorways and three years of the opening of the motorways, we had, for instance, 41 traffic accidents with uh, fatalities. Now we reduce that uh, to 29 uh, uh, traffic accidents with fatalities. Um, uh, we are also active not only, as I mentioned, to railway sector, road sector, because we are borders with uh, eight countries, we are very active to speed up procedures on the crossing border. Uh, we have EU countries and actually out of four EU countries we have two Schengen countries on our border and we try to find the best way to reduce stopping time at the border. Uh, uh, that's not issue only in the construction or reconstruction crossing border, that is more issue of the, of the organization of the works and the cooperation between uh, authorities from two countries. It's not easy job. It's not easy job. And uh, yesterday, when I uh, passing from uh, Serbia and entering to Croatia, I noticed 5.5 uh, kilometers of trucks waiting at the border. It is common picture, I think, every day on the, our border. And uh, uh, why I'm telling this? It's not only the, the issue to complete the, the motorway. If you have stopping time at the border, we. Actually, the, the, real, the real effect would be if we would have smooth tra transport operation across the border. That's, that's uh, also that I wanted to point, to point out. Uh, in Serbia, we, uh, I would like to say that uh, three issues are important for the successful implementation of the project. The first issue is the stability of the government. And uh, at least, let's say, two mandates should be, should be the government in place to implement the biggest project because this project takes four, eight, ten years to be finished. The second issue is uh, financing. You have to actually provide stable financing. And the third issue is, is it actually the team leading the project because any project is uh, no easy. It's no easy any project because uh, you, you, you are facing with many problems in the phase of the special planning urbanistic planning, designing, uh, land acquisition, and, of course, construction issues. Uh, uh, when it comes to the financing, uh, France kindly asked me to say how we are doing in Serbia. 
we, uh, I think, uh, successfully managing uh, several ways of the financing uh, of, let's say, capital projects. Uh, we are doing through, let's say, European Bank and uh, World Bank, but when uh, the, the, the projects will be implemented on the core network. If the projects are not uh, being implemented on the core network, we use bilateral cooperation and we develop very well bilateral cooperation with Chinese, with Russia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, France, and so on. So we have bilateral agreements between two governments and we have direct uh, communication and nominating of the contractor from that country and with obligation to provide financing for credit to be implemented in Serbia. So the financing is very important, important issue and uh, somehow we are combinating, for instance, in one project, several ways of financing European funds, Chinese funds, and EU funds. And I think we are doing successfully. Uh, regarding to the next steps, I would like to say that uh, uh, now we, we are in second uh, big uh, cycle of the investments. And now we are constructing 400 kilometers of roads in Serbia, half of that our motorways, the, the second half is high-speed high roads. And uh, this year we are starting, let's say, the, the, third, the third cycles of the investments for the construction of the roads. We are starting construction 350 kilometers next month and uh, month uh, after. So I think in a few years we will be, let's say, we are a partner regarding the motorways. Uh, we'll have, uh, according to my countings, uh, around 1,700 kilometers of the motorways in Serbia. Regarding the roadways, I think we are on the good way to catch EU countries and to try to be uh, also uh, good and uh, reliable partner in the railway sector. That is for the beginning, Franz, and yeah. I can talk later yeah. Yeah. if you would like. Thank you, thank you very much for giving us insight in the efforts of uh, Serbia to improve uh, accessibility, connectivity, and mobility. And I just want to congratulate you on the progress made in the last several years. Uh, yes, in next, maybe I will ask you what is the social impact, what does it mean for the people in Serbia and also for those visiting Serbia. So our next speaker is coming from Croatia and uh, Mr. Goran Legac is coming from the roads of Croatia or Hrvatske Ceste. And to my understanding, uh, Croatia has made a huge, huge progress once you built your first motorways. In particular for myself, being Slovenian, I was always going to Kvarner, to islands next to Slovenia. Now I can go to Makarska, Split, whatever I like, because on driving on motorway is much better, faster and safer. But you have a gem that has been opened for traffic not long ago. Can you tell us more, please? Yes, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, first, uh, let me to introduce myself. I'm coming from Croatian Roads, which is the operator of the state-owned roads without toll. Uh, previously in my professional career, I was also a member of the Croatian Motorways, which built a successfully comprehensive network of the motorways in Croatia, <clears throat> but also was part of a successful project, one of the flagship projects in Croatia, and we saw it on one slide. It was the new airport of Zagreb. So exclusively, I will be talking here uh, for the uh, recently uh, built and implemented EU co-funded project, uh, which is a Pelješac link project. It is not just a bridge, but the bridge is uh, most known, well known uh, all across the Europe and uh, worldwide because of the engagement of the foreign and uh, overseas uh, contractors. Uh, this project, which had uh, Three major, uh, three major um, aims or targets was to um, complete uh, the uh, 10T attached network, also to uh, approach to the uh, future Schengen uh, regime of the customs. Before, because this project was uh, launched uh, at 2005, but the ideas came. Uh, almost 25 years ago. So from the idea, from the uh, political uh, in initiative, 
to the completion of the project. Uh, we needed also to uh, close the financial agreements and this was uh, with the great help of the European Union because since we are the young member of the European uh, Union since 2013, uh, we had to stop this project, uh, suspend the works at 2009 because of the lack of the national funds which we used uh, for the uh, development of the motorway network at, at that time. So we couldn't uh, uh, allow ourselves to go in a further loans, uh, further uh, uh, bank loans uh, because of the great uh, financial crisis at that time. So we suspended the works, we uh, terminated the contracts, but the works which were uh, started at that time were, was very worthwhile for the future uh, project and the future uh, completion of the works. For example, uh, the, uh, our, our national uh, companies, national contractor companies, finished at that time preparatory works and uh, mobilization of the site, which helped a lot for the future uh, successful initiation and uh, quick mobilization of the uh, future contractors. So uh, we had to adopt also the, uh, all the uh, um, new strategies, for example, for the road safety assessment, for the uh, environmental uh, environmental issues. Uh, this project was also uh, not just the flagship project for us and very uh, strategically speaking very important for our government and for the whole region. It is also a pilot project because it was the, uh, let's say not, not the first one but the first of the big uh, massive infrastructural project implementation in Croatia co-funded uh, with the EU fund. Uh, under the green screen. So we needed to uh, go through the uh, uh, already said uh, road uh, safety assessment, uh, environmental impact study because of the new uh, Nature 2000 uh, uh, provisions of the EU. Uh, while this environment uh, of, the, of the bridge and of the project is under the protection of the natural protection uh, in Croatia. So we uh, successfully went through all these assessments and also we needed to uh, uh, pay attention to possible alternatives of the, of the project, of the link. So we assessed uh, several alternatives, for example eight of them, and uh, through this uh, pre-feasibility study at 2012 and 2013 uh, we uh, we developed, we developed and uh, uh, shown that with this study, pre-study, that the most uh, feasible and uh, constructible uh, solution is the, uh, this kind of bridge. There, there are also some uh, other kinds of bridges uh, proposed, but this was the most uh, feasible, let's say. So, uh, we had to adopt also some uh, EU directives uh, in parallel with the preparation of this uh, project. For example, EU directives on uh, procurement, uh, which was very important for us and uh, it was a part of uh, our uh, uh, pre-agreement with the EU, EU uh, membership. So with this ad adoption, uh, we went to the two stages of the um, procurement, public procurement process, uh, one which showed the interest of the, of the contractors, international contractors, and they came from eight countries around the world, from America, from Asia, from uh, uh, Europe, from uh, local at that time, but since we had a major collapse of the local construction market at 2012, let's say, uh, we couldn't achieve any, any of uh, our domestic uh, contractors to, to participate in this uh, process. And in second stage we had also received three offers for the, for the con construction of the bridge, like, uh, just for this lot. 
and uh, this uh, proposal came from Italy, from uh, Austria, and from uh, China. And uh, after the assessment of the proposals, the Chinese contractors were most uh, eligible, and we uh, awarded the contract of, uh, under the Red Book of Fidic uh, to Chinese contractors. I could now probably say that we overcome all the, let's say, uh, challenges which were uh, in front of us and uh, at that time of the preparation phase and on the construction phase and successfully completed the overall project uh, this, this April because part of this uh, project was all, not just the bridge itself which ended uh, one and a half years ago but also the access roads and the bypass of the uh, local, uh, local cities. Uh, with this project, we, uh, we connected the separated and divided country. We entered into the Schengen uh, regime of customs. We uh, also uh, elevated the road safety because there were no major uh, and uh, severe uh, accidents during the use of the, this link. Uh, and we, uh, we uh, also uh, uh, managed with a with a road road connection uh, without any any customs, which helps to to people to to commute to to transport their goods uh, for uh, let's say half an hour instead of several hours waiting at the customs during the peak uh, uh, during the peaks in the summer and a few weeks in the winter. So if we, if we compare this project to other projects developed by our, our own funds, funding uh, before uh, uh, for, the, for the motorway uh, program, uh, we can say that uh, since our major um, economy coming from, the, coming from the tourism, we helped a lot uh, for people to come uh, directly on the spot with uh, their vehicles and uh, we also uh, di uh, diminished the, the traffic congestion on, uh, on our roads and motorways by uh, completing all the major uh, projects in full profile under the safety and environmentally uh, completion of the, these projects. Great, thank you very much. I am uh, looking forward to drive through over this bridge. Uh, I would like to stress or ask uh, only one thing. So 85% came from EU funds. Am I wrong or right? From the eligible uh, costs. Yes, yes, eligible, of course yes. eligible. Yeah. And uh, constructor was Chinese company. Uh, only for the bridge. Only for the bridge. The rest of the project was built by a yeah. Greek company and uh, Austrian company. Great. I just want to congratulate you on this uh, issue. And one more thing, we are talking a lot about sustainable transport and as I say today, we cannot touch uh, everything. Transport is uh, beautiful and complex. But is there a bicycle route? Can uh, bic uh, cyclists use this bridge? Uh, actually not, because this is the high-speed uh, road, which is exclusively used by the vehicles. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, prepare questions for both uh, speakers already taking the, took the took of floor. And now <coughs> we will give the floor to Mr. Zoran Andrich, coming from Sarajevo, capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina. <laughs> Zoran, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Franz, for inviting us. Uh, uh, I would like just to give you a brief overview about infrastructure projects development in Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, so we have uh, our dear neighbors, Croatia, Republic of Serbia, and Montenegro. Uh, we have a 1,000 kilometers border with the uh, Republic of Croatia, so we have a 1,000 border and Schengen on it. So it's a really uh, interesting uh, uh, from one side. We have 22 kilometers coast on uh, Adriatic Sea, but we don't have any major ports there. 
we are very depending on port of Ploče in Republic of Croatia, so it is, of course, the starting point for Corridor 5C, both road and uh, railway corridor. Uh, if we take into account the road network, on the indicative extension of 10T network, we will have the Corridor 5C going through Bosnia and Herzegovina, something about uh, 335 kilometers from south to the north. Uh, current state of play, we construct something about 140 kilometers. And uh, financial are secured. I, I don't think that, so I, I had the help from the idea. And uh, uh, we are facing some issues. Uh, the construction started in 2000, but uh, we had some approach. Uh, uh, it, it's a saying that you can learn from your mistakes, and uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, obviously, we can learn a lot because. We divided this corridor in a lot of small pieces and now we are struggling with uh, a lot of uh, companies involved and uh, it's, a, it's a really difficult to solve all the puzzle from uh, south to north. But uh, we are optimist, uh, north part of this corridor, uh, we will have it uh, done by 2026. Uh, we still have some political issues on uh, some loans and uh, grants from uh, European Union, but I think this uh, issue will be solved because it's a international, it's a European corridor. It's not just a matter of Bosnia and Herzegovina. We also have uh, 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 on, a, on a comprehensive network, so if you take a car from Ljubljana, you can use the highway almost all the way to Sarajevo. We, you, you, uh, you will find some 60 or 70 kilometers gap, so we will provide you a secure and fast connection up to 2026. Uh, from, uh, uh, on a comprehensive, we have a, a highway built from uh, Gradiška, when you are entering from Croatia, from Gradiška, all the way to Doboj, so we have some alternative routes to, to use. Uh, uh, railway Corridor 5C, the railway is there, but uh, still not uh, uh, totally in line with 10T regulations, so we need to improve some sections and uh, some projects are ongoing, so we still have that deadline 2030. Uh, railway on a comprehensive, we have one railway line uh, connecting east to west, so we are very depending on Republic of Serbia on east and uh, Republic of Croatia on the west. Uh, also uh, trying to make the, uh, uh, some progress moving from road to rail because uh, we are used to build only roads, now we are changing our thoughts and uh, of course realizing that railway is the actual future. Uh, uh, with uh, Republic of Serbia we are trying to solve the uh, railway connecting Doboj on Corridor 5C with, uh, we call it uh, Sarajevo-Belgrade railway line, but it's a part from Doboj to Rumain in, in Republic of Serbia. With Montenegro, we are dealing uh, on a comprehensive network. We have one road connecting Sarajevo and Podgorica, going uh, uh, to later to Tirana. Uh, we have an issue on border crossing point, very bad uh, current situation. So we are now providing uh, fundings for uh, making that road from Sarajevo to Podgorica in a much more better way. Uh, uh, with uh, Republic of Croatia, we had uh, a lot of uh, good examples of mutual cooperation because we provide new, uh, two new bridges, one in, in Gradiška and one in uh, Svilaj on Corridor 5C. Uh, of course, uh, uh, using knowledge from a company uh, in, in, in Croatia because 
they build uh, almost all uh, highways and uh, now we can use or we can share that, that knowledge with them and uh, we are trying to develop in that way. We also have a very important uh, inland waterway connecting Slovenia, uh, Republic of Croatia and uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Serbia. We have uh, one commission for dealing with uh, Sava River and uh, of course we are trying to improve this inland waterway in order to have all the multimodality as it is possible. So we have port of Brčko uh, investing in uh, reconstruction of that port with the help of the European Union of course. Uh, we have one big issue on the river Sava. It is uh, one project for the mining the right bank of the river Sava. We are still facing some issues from the past war so uh, uh, with the help of the World Bank and of course the European Commission uh, we provide 8 million euros uh, grants for the mining and uh, we hope that 2025 will be the year without mines on River Sava so that is the prerequisite for uh, fully economical use of, of, of this river. Of course, you will ask me about bicycle route, so I can tell you that uh, along the corridor of River Sava, we are trying to establish a really nice bicycle route, so you can ride your bicycle there. Thank you very much. Just uh, one question. Uh, sorry, ju just one more. I think our major issue now are the waiting times on borders, so we are working uh, very much on it and uh, one year uh, in our lives it makes 3,000 years uh, waiting times for truck drivers so it's a really big issue for us we are dealing all these things uh, just to, to, to make some progress if you want to drive some goods from Bosnia Herzegovina let's say to Austria you will spend more time waiting on borders than actually driving, so it's a really, a really big issue. 3,000 years are uh, our uh, main object to observe what is going on today and how can we improve those things. Of course, new railway lines, uh, of course, new roads when it's necessary, and uh, multimodality is our priority, so River Sava, port of uh, Ploče in, in Croatia. Uh, uh, you mentioned the uh, modification of TNT network, so we propose one re new railway line from Čaplina to Nikšić Podgorica, connecting corridor 5C with uh, corridor going from Bar to uh, Belgrade, and uh, in that way trying to make the best connection between port of Ploče and port of Bar in Montenegro. So then we will have a, a, the real multimodality on, on, on our, in, in our countries. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Zoran, for this. First of all, I would like to ask you uh, about this. It's not going back. Go back. I really want to go back. Anyhow, uh, there was a slide where it shows two connections between Sarajevo and Belgrade. What does it mean? You are may constructing two motorways or only one will be chosen? We like, uh, uh, we like Republic of Croatia and Republic of Serbia so much and we would like to have two highways between uh, also with Croatia and with, with Serbia. No, it, uh, uh, we have a connection, it's on the comprehensive network of uh, uh, indicative extension of TNT. It goes from Sarajevo to Belgrade over place called Visegrad. Uh, we are working on, 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 on that. Uh, it is going to be a road uh, directly connecting two capitals. And of course, on north, we are trying to uh, make one more uh, road uh, uh, with the help of Republic of Serbia. They are dealing with a new bridge and uh, new highway between uh, Belgrade and uh, Bielina, so the future is bright and uh, we just have to work more. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I saw that you are so rich that you don't know where to put money and you want to make two or three immortalizations so on one we are, the other. Yes, we are totally depending on the, let's say, WBIF, of course, and on the understanding of the international financial institutions. I think the, we are solving the puzzle and uh, we are now trying to finish the project that I started a long way. Thank, and thank you also to mention this uh, demonization of River Sava and all the other issues because we are, we are not aware, we forget many times that the consequences of any aggression or war are felt many, many, many years uh, after. So thank you for this. Uh, and now let us turn to our guest from north of Slovenia, from Austria. Helmut, tell us what's going on there. Uh, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation and for the perfect organization of this event. It is very, very, very good, very impressive, and I like to be here. Uh, I have the great honor to tell you something about uh, infrastructure investments in Austria. Uh, and I would like to start uh, with, let's say, the first slide is this one. Uh, I start with rail, uh, because rail has the priority in Austria. Uh, it, we had decades when the road has had the priority, uh, I would say from 1950 to 1990, uh, 40 years more or less, where all forces were were focused on, on road and we have a road and motorway network which is about 95% completed and there are some projects which have been put on hold in the last time and our, our big force goes into rail and we have three really big pro projects, four, even four, because if I say uh, the four tracks uh, railway from Vienna to Wales where there is a branch to Salzburg and to Passau, uh, four tracks. It is in the meantime completed until Linz, so there's only the short section between Linz and Wales, you see it on the map, uh, is still a uh, two track. And this is uh, on, the, on the preparation and the construction part. But the really big projects are projects of European dimension. Uh, the first is, if you see it on the map, south of Innsbruck, Going to Italy, it is uh, across the border of the, of the Danube region strategy as well, but nevertheless, the half of it is in, is in Austria. It is the Brenner Base Tunnel. The, other, the second one is between Vienna and Bruck and Amur, Graz. It is the Semmering Base Tunnel. And we have a, a, an additional uh, railway line, a, a missing link, which is being closed, and this is the line between Graz and Frankfurt, the so-called Coral Railway. This is to the Brenner Base Tunnel. I will show you just a few slides of it. It's a, it's a, a, a tunnel which actually will consist of three tubes. Two, two of the three is the railway tubes, and uh, the third one is partly for the, let's say, exploration uh, and for the for the construction phase, but there is also all this equipment of electro electric equipment, electronic equipment, and so on for the tunnel safety and, and so on. Uh, you see also on, uh, that is the view, let's say, from Innsbruck towards the south to Franzens Feste for Tetza, and uh, you see the connection with the existing uh, bypass of, of Innsbruck. Uh, which is also connected with the Brenner Base Tunnel so that uh, freight trains coming from the north can pass through this tunnel and go directly to Brenner Base Tunnel without passing through Innsbruck railway station. This is a, just an impression of the construction work where this branching point is a bit south of Innsbruck. This is a uh, construction site uh, between Innsbruck and the Brenner Pass, uh, fairly south, uh, I would say 10 kilometers distant from the border, 
and uh, there's a, an access from, from the valley, it goes down to the dung because the dung is much lower. Here, the second important project which I mentioned is Semmering Base Tunnel. This tunnel will improve the connection also between Vienna and Ljubljana uh, considerably because it will shorten the traveling time by almost 30 minutes. Uh, it has a long history because, uh, as far as I remember, it was first discussed in 1986 and then uh, first studies started and so on. It was, it was taken into consideration more uh, in detail in uh, around 1990-1992, but with another alignment, more direct, but this was at the end, uh, this project was killed in the, in the, in the struggle between uh, the two provinces, Lower Austria and Syria, and at the end, this was the solution to overcome this obstacle and to construct a longer tunnel, which is flatter, of course, it has only eight per mil uh, gradient. And uh, uh, it, there was also the hope to bypass a geologically very co complex and complicated uh, um, ground uh, in, in the mountain. Uh, I'm not sure if this was successful because here there are also very, very heavy uh, troubles with the construction and in the last year they managed only 200 meters of, of progress in, in tunnel boring. But uh, the, for the rest it is all together, it's 28 kilometers long. Uh, there are still six, 700 meters are still missing, so the rest is done. This is the northern portal in the area of Glocknitz in Lower Austria, under the construction site. Here you see the historic railway. It was beautiful. It was. It is under uh, uh, World Heritage uh, of UNESCO. Uh, so this is a real uh, impressive situation because it is something where culture and and, and nature really uh, are merged together into into something which is also for uh, touristically very interesting. This is the south portal in Mürzuschlag on the Styrian side. Uh, you see on the, to the left, you see a bit of the, of the tunnel portal, and this is the, 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 in the way where it goes into the railway station. And then Koran Railway. Uh, this is a very interesting project because um, almost everybody said, oh, there is no need. Uh, we can evacuate Graz and Klagenfurt three times a day via this capacity. And, uh, but uh, on the other hand, there was of course no, no traffic demand because everybody used the car uh, as there was no alternative. The alternative would have been a detour of more than 100 kilometers of about uh, Brooklyn and Moore with almost three hours traveling time. And here you would have less than one hour if it's, when it's ready. It will be ready in, uh, in uh, two years from now. And then with the travel time will be 40, 45 minutes between Graz and Frankfurt. And it will have a, a strong impact in the local and regional economy as already now we have many, many industry and, 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 and uh, enterprises uh, uh, taking place there. So uh, this is really something which will uh, convert uh, the region from, uh, from uh, let's say, uh, peripheral to a very central part. This is a construction site, the situation last year in the region of Graz, south of Graz. Uh, this is the construction site of the railway station Weststeiermark, Western Styria, which is almost complete in the meantime. In the meantime. This is the historic moment of the breakthrough of the tunnel boring. And, and uh, was it 2008? No, 2018, I would say. And this is the, the railway station of St. Paul in Laventhal. This is some construction on the river, uh, bridge, the, uh, the high bridge of the, across the Drava River in Carinthia. And this is uh, the other crossing of the Drava River, also in Carinthia, shortly in front of Klagenfurt. 
So shortly to the motorway, you see whatever is blue here is already completed. Uh, green is also completed because this is the expressways, and we have only uh, a few. Well, this is the toll. We have a general. We have a toll system in Austria by vignette, and uh, we have a few sections which are uh, there is additional toll uh, to pay on the on the when you are passing. We have a, a, a gap in the northeast of Vienna, and this has been. Uh, let's say put, put on hold in the meantime. This should be the, the, the uh, visualization of the, of the cross section of this motorway, uh, a Lobau tunnel under the Lobau. But there were so many protests, and now we have a green minister of, for the uh, transport, and she said, "Okay, we have to stop this project. We will see what next year there is elections. Maybe it's going on, but at the moment it is on hold." Thank you. Uh, thank you. Helmut also for mentioning the obstacle called environmentalists, but of course they are needed, they are here, their voice needs to be heard, but we should nevertheless uh, do things that are needed, and this means uh, railways and uh, roads. One thing, I often go to the Elbe and uh, Austria, and I always miss a link between Spital and Lienz, because I have to go to Innsbruck via Rosenheim in Germany. Why Austria is not linked from east to west with, let's say, possibility to yes. drive on a high quality uh, road? Yeah, um, there is the B100, which is a more or less high quality road, but it is only two, two lines, two lanes, uh, not, not motorway, it is not foreseen. Uh, we had a study in the 1990s, which was the GSD study, the study of the Danube region and uh, Austria and surrounding, and they were put some, uh, identified some of the nodes, and then there were the main connections, but only with the big nodes, of course, and only where there are big nodes connected, there was a motorway, and from, from Spital and Adrauto to the west, there is not, not a big node, and there is also not so much traffic. Uh, but of course, uh, you can take the motorway to Salzburg and then the motorway from Salzburg to Innsbruck, which is more distance, of course. Thank you very much, but I'm going to provoke our Austrian colleagues further on, because regardless of what Helmut just said, us, this is a road that goes through villages, has a speed limit and a number of radars. So I'm always afraid that I'm going to contribute to the Austrian budget. Anyhow. Thank you for contributing. <laughs> so anyhow, thank you. And now we are coming to my Slovenian colleague friend, Christian, to tell us about a project we have been waiting for more than 30 years, I guess, or something like this. So Christian, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks Franz for, for the word. Uh, as uh, already explained, uh, this project is a railway project, uh, regards the uh, second track uh, from the port of Koper to, to the, to the Divacha. Uh, maybe at the beginning just a few words about the company. The 2TDK company was established by the state. It's a limited company uh, established in 2018. Uh, we are responsible only for this project, so for the development, construction and also the uh, exploration of this project after, after the finishing. Uh, we have a concession uh, nominated by the state of Slovenia for 45 years. Uh, so we are responsible for uh, financing, uh, construction, and afterwards for the operation of, of this project. Uh, so this is the this is the uh, vaguely the re railway line from the port of Koper on the left side of the picture to the Divacha, which is uh, hidden in, on the right side of the picture. Uh, the track uh, is stretched along the 27 kilometers. Uh, we have to bridge the elevation of 430 meters from the practical of the, from the port of Koper, which is zero above the sea level, to the Divacha, which is 430 meters. Uh, therefore, the line is uh, tunneled. Uh, so, at, uh, on the distance of 27 kilometers, we have seven tunnels, uh, three bridges, 
uh, and uh, 37 kilometers of uh, tunnels uh, is going to be to be built because of the three of the longest tunnels are uh, double piped. Um, just for the impression, the 37 kilometers of the tunnels. This is the lo it's, it's longer than all tunnels on the highway program in Slovenia. So we are talking about the single biggest infrastructure project in in Slovenia at the moment. So as you see, 75% of this line is in tunnels. Why we are building this uh, this track? We would like to speed up the passenger and, uh, and the freight transport. Uh, so at the moment, the uh, travel times for the passenger trains are 45 minutes on the existing line, Vivace Koper. Uh, it will be shortened uh, to 17, 17 minutes with the uh, with high speed uh, line of the 160 kilometers per hour. While for the freight trains, the current travel time is 110 minutes. It will be shortened uh, to 25 to 35 minutes and uh, the capacity, uh, the, the speed capacity of the line will be 120 kilometers. Uh, at the moment, uh, it is possible uh, to uh, get 90 trains per day uh, from Koper to Divaca. Uh, after the construction, it will, be, it will be 212 trains on both lines. So we are talking about the new line, which is tunneled. And we, are, we will also use for the certain am amount of time the existing line, uh, which will be operated uh, parallelly to the to the new uh, railway line. So that's why the increase is, in increase is so so big. So as already told, we are talking about the seven tunnels, three viaducts, along 27 kilometers of route. Uh, currently. There are more than 1,100 1, workers on all construction sites. Uh, so, uh, as you see in these pictures, the, the work started in two, 2019 with the, uh, with, the, with the connecting roads. And at the moment, uh, there we are in full operation. Uh, we are finishing the tunnel works on the, on the, on the tunnel T8, which is on the seaside. Uh, and also both uh, major viaducts, and it will be all finished by the end of this year. So the three viaducts already already told uh, were uh, are called Berglinschica, Gabrovica, and Vinyan. Total length of all three viaducts is uh, one kilometer and two hundred and fifty meters. Uh, the on the left side, you, on the left picture, you see the Glinschica uh, uh, bridge, which is already finished. And on the right side, you see both uh, longest viaducts, but they are not finished yet. These are these are also these are uh, impressions how it will be looked uh, after the finishing. Why? What is the impact of this railway line to economy, environment, tourism? Uh, as my Austrian colleague already explained, uh, they have finished with the with the roads and, and started developing the railways. We are on the good way to do the same. Uh, as you know, um, for the last 25, 30 years, uh, the major investment in Slovenia were put on in, in the roads. And now we guess it's a time for the development of the railway lines. Uh, so uh, it is calculated that this impact can be up to 3 billion euros for the Slovenian economy in, the, in a certain amount of time. Uh, while also the environmental significance of movements of cargo from roads to railways uh, is very important uh, in, this, in this case. Uh, what is the status of the works? Uh, the timeline, timeline, timeline of the project, as already explained, started in the first quarter of 2019 with the access roads uh, and will be finished in the second quarter of 2026 with the remedial work and the trial operation. Uh, the overall project is divided in so-called three lots. The lot one is, uh, uh, it regards the, both the longest tunnels which are in karst area. The lot two is tunnels from T3 to T8 and all both the longest viaducts which is on the coastal area. And the lot three which we, also, we already also signed the, the contract uh, just a few months ago uh, it regards the track and track facilities 
uh, which will be which will be implemented later after the finishing of the of the lot one and lot two. Uh, as you see, services are parallel from first quarter of 2019 and will be finished by the end of 2026. A uh, summary of the, of the investment cost. Uh, this year we have adopted the uh, amended investment program, uh, mainly, mainly due to the increase in prices uh, in the overall world, not only in Slovenia. Uh, so at, at now we have a financial structure fixed at 1.1 uh, billion euros. Uh, which we believe it will be sufficient for the, for the finishing of this project. Uh, what are the sources of financing at current prices? As you can see, uh, from the 1.1 billion of euros, uh, the, practically half of the budget is provided by the state, uh, capital of Slovenia, and, uh, and the capital of Slovenia uh, regarding the toll sur sur surcharges. Uh, and increased user charge for the for the cargo uh, from under the railways. Uh, so uh, EU grants are provided uh, 288.6 million euros. We believe that we will reach even more of this because we are planning to put the uh, to put the uh, request for for additional financing for the so-called this lot three. Uh, and we believe that we will we will we will uh, breach this 288 euro, uh, million of euros. Uh, the rest of the of the financial structure is uh, debt of the EIB, uh, which is up to 250 million euros. The, uh, the we are we are practically at the at the final negotiations uh, for the for the signing of the contract. Uh, in July, the board of directors uh, agreed uh, with, uh, with this project, so we are now in the phase of negotiations thoroughly. Uh, while the commercial debt bank, which is already uh, approved, is 112.5 is million euros, so the financial structure is solid, it's fixed, and uh, we believe uh, it's practically uh, not ongoing and, and there should be no problem regarding this. Uh, what's completed? Uh, 23 kilometers of access roads, which you can see on the left side. Uh, the Glinschitz viaduct already explained, you, you, it, which is between the two longest in tunnels, between T1 tunnel and T2 tunnel. So this Glinschitz viaduct was essential for starting the works on the both tunnels from, from this valley, from this side. Uh, water is in progress. The excavation of the tunnels began in September 2021. Uh, milestones already reached. Uh, we have break, break, broke through the three tunnels, T3, T7, and T8. And the 28 kilometers of the tunnels are already excavated out of 37 uh, kilometers. Uh, under construction is a viaduct Gabrovica. Uh, this is very uh, picturesque viaduct because it's below the famous uh, Chernikal viaduct on the, on the highway program. Uh, the constructor, the architect of this, uh, of this viaduct uh, is the same. It's Mr. Pippenbacher, as you are very familiar with his name, I guess. Uh, so he ag agreed that these viaducts can be, can be crossed. Uh, it's uh, Two, two thirds of this viaduct is already finished. On the right picture, you can see the latest development. So you can see it's quite, uh, quite far. Uh, the second viaduct is uh, via Viaduct Vignan. It is in the valley of Vignan, very close to the Italian border. And uh, it will also be finished uh, by the end of this year. Uh, already explained by Mr. Zepic, eco and social responsibility. The whole area is uh, a, ve a very fragile karst area, so uh, we are very, uh, very, uh, very close connected to the to the to this karstologist and also and all uh, monitoring services. Uh, it was expected that during the during the, the excavation works, uh, around 100 smaller or bigger caves will be discovered. 
so at the moment we have discovered 20, uh, 52 caves uh, and we are 80% through of the excavation. So do we believe that we will, we will be underneath this uh, threshold of 110 caves? Uh, many of them are picturesque. Um, they are uh, by, by all marked uh, by the cartologist, uh, by the cartologist, and uh, they are not uh, stopping the works at the moment. So, this is from my side. Thanks for your attention. You thank us. I would like to thank you very much, and thank to all the speakers. Now. Do you have some urgent message you want to share to the participants that you forgot to say? Or we give a floor to the audience? Good. So, the turn is on you. Do you have any question? Was something not clear, too complicated? Are you expert or non-expert? Whatever question is a great question. So, Jana, please, the floor is yours. Or let, perfect. I would like to address my question to the Croatian side, and that I know that we are par we are discussing now the priority area one B. Uh, I would like to ask you if you witnessed any substantial impact on the waterway transport due to the new Palajski most, or uh, or it, if it affected the waterway transport. You yeah, so big cruisers can go under the bridge and so on, right? Yes, it was a part of the preparation of the of this project and the negotiations with the, our neighboring country. So uh, the clearance is uh, uh, 55 times 200. So with the maritime study, it was uh, it was uh, assessed, built, and uh, already tried. So the big cruise ships went through this uh, bridge. Okay. Please, I, uh, please introduce yourself. And Thank you. Uh, as a fly member of Parliament of Baden-Württemberg, where the Danube uh, starts. Spring, <laughs> starts, yeah. Okay, I just um, had the impression that we talked a lot of highways and some uh, trains um, concerning uh, the coherence of policy in the European Union. Uh, after Green Deal, sustainability checking, and so on. H how do you think, how uh, do you estimate that the coherence to the EU policy after discussion of climate change is still there on the building highways in this large extension we saw uh, in, the, in the pictures? And another point concerning the, the, the bicycle way I appreciate this very much because we ha we need nearly uh, four lanes or so in the German part and the Austrian part for at the Danube River for bicycle lanes because there are so many people. So I think if you want to develop um, your countries in in touristic in a touristic way, it's very urgent to make this because your uh, countries are so lovely uh, to visit and uh, you see. Uh, the countryside better if you go slower than by 200 kilometers per hour. Thank you very much for these uh, questions and comments. May I s answer you? Unless you want to do it, one of you. Well, first of all, first of all, as a coordinator of priority area 1B, I have to stress all modes are important, all are supported by us and all need to cooperate, do not compete. We are aware of, let's say, environmental constraints, but first of all, I mentioned at my initial speech, in the introductory speech, that there are huge differences between the countries. So, we like it or not, 80% of goods and people are still on the roads. What does it mean? It means that countries who has not developed road infrastructure has more casualties. Road safety, lives are lost. I don't know what is the price of a life in Germany, but it's estimated, I think, one million or more, whatever. So we need both railways, railway network, and high quality road network. 
Second, on let's say bicycle routes, we have these Euro Velo, Euro Velo routes that are very, very much appreciated and they are transnational, trans-European. But I have a feeling that also every country now is doing a lot in terms to improve their cycling network. I do miss sometimes in Croatia when I go to Makarska cycling route there, but you have an excellent uh, cycling route in Austria and uh, along the river Danube and uh, some other issues. And it's really, really progressing well. We do take care about the environment, but we also would like that it would be appreciated the present needs of the society. If we want to have the Chinese goods, we have to develop things. I'm sorry to say so. And second, I would like to say, because you are from Baden-Württemberg, we do support your Magistrale for Europe, very much. And this is going from Strasbourg to, to Vienna to Bratislava, a railway line. I do appreciate it very much. I, we can speak later on also during the coffee, but this is the issue. We are very, very much in a transport policy of the EU, but we are aware what are the legs. I like to say, it's good to talk digitalization of transport. It's good to talk autonomous vehicles. Some people talk about Hyperloop. I don't know if you heard about this, you know, we go under the ground. And all this costs money and all this take time. We are having developing electric uh, planes, electric aviation. We have in Slovenia a company developing hydrogen plane. So the aviation is going to be clean. When? I cannot tell you. Five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, who knows? But we have to have, as I said, I will repeat again, all modes of transport to assist us, our jobs and our profession and so on. But of course, for urban transport, which is different to the long uh, distance transport, there are all options, car sharing, pool sharing, uh, e-scooters, bicycles, and so on and so on. But urban transport is specific because it's a huge concentration of people on a little area. If you have to cross uh, distances, if you have scattered villages and so on, sometimes it's very, very challenging to have the system work, in particular public system. Uh, Helmut is a very much in your thoughts, so Helmut, will add something, please. Before I would like to take the floor to add a few sentences. Um, the Austrian transport policy, as far as I know them, uh, and it was in the early 1990s that I entered the ministry, it was always the, the big focus was on shifting transport from road to rail. And at that time, we had on the Brenner, in the Brenner axis around 35% uh, rail and 65% on road. And in the meantime, after all these efforts which we have done, we have 28% on the, on the rail and 72% and on, 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 on road. Uh, why is that like this? There are th different uh, reasons. One is that railways still are fragmented in the, at the national borders. Which, uh, have you ever seen a truck changing its motor in the, on the border? I don't believe so. But uh, in, on, on, the, on the rail, we still change locomotive on most of the borders. Uh, we have uh, changing, changing uh, operation conditions. We have changing signalization and so on, different in, in one country and the other. I think 28 different, 37 different systems in, in Europe. Uh, this is one side. The other side is that uh, we have uh, not, uh, let's say, uh, the, the pricing. We don't, uh, or we have all very little internalization of external costs. This would also give favor to the, to the rail. And what we also would need, and this is uh, also something which is uh, only at the beginning, to have a better logistic, um, in particular the, the road rail terminals must be reinforced uh, also not only in the infrastructure, also in the operation, also in uh, digitalization and so on. There are so many uh, uh, keys to, to point uh, that uh, 
if if we manage it to do this, then we can improve the model shift, but uh, the model share. But uh, at the moment, it is uh, insufficient, I would say. But there's much potential for the future. Thank you very much. As I said, uh, transport is complex, beautiful, challenging, and uh, Helmut just mentioned terminals. Terminals are very important. And I just give you one figure for you to understand the differences between the 14 countries. When you look at so-called logistic performance index that is prepared every year by the World Bank, you will find out two countries, Germany and Austria, among five top in the world. And all the others are then falling down, and the last of the 14 is 138. What I would like to say, if we join forces for this region and learn from each other, see why one is, can be on top and the other is far almost to the bottom, we can improve the whole macro region. And this is my, uh, let's say, wish or task as a coordinator. Yeah, I'm not looking for Slovenia or Austria as a piece, but the whole region from Baden-Württemberg. Very good. To some other places. Uh, I think that we have an Ukrainian friend, uh, Zinovi, who would like to take a floor. So, I have to say, because uh, of all these issues are happening within the country of Zinovi, there are a number of initiatives going on in the field of transport. One of them is the so-called solidarity lanes, which means that we should improve, or we are improving, the connections with Ukraine in order to get the grain or other goods out of Ukraine and vice versa. For the Balkan, uh, uh, Western Balkan and also neighboring countries, there is initiative within the transport community called Green Lanes, which means what somebody mentioned earlier, the issue of cross, uh, border crossings. With solidarity lanes, we want to improve connections yeah. for the goods. With green lanes, we want to shorten the waiting time at the borders within, between the countries of the, this uh, part of the Danube region that belong to Western Balkans, but also between the EU and non-EU countries. So, Zinovi, please. Thank you. Can you be brief? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, also, thank you, Franz, for this uh, kind of possibility, because uh, besides your introduction, yesterday there uh, was a lot of words about Ukraine and also Moldova. Today is nothing besides your words. Therefore, I should underline, uh, first of all, that uh, it's only the, uh, not only the question of grain, it also became the question of military mobility. Therefore, I want to underline the, uh, the following. Last year's uh, last year, it became uh, something uh, crucial changing because uh, uh, in parallel to uh, Ukrainian and Moldovan obtaining status of candidate country, uh, they became partners of uh, Three Seas Initiative. And those macro, uh, two macro regional structures uh, which cover the uh, region now uh, embrace uh, from uh, Finland till Turkey and from Black Sea area to Adriatic area. And it's obtained uh, a very interesting situation that all candidate countries to the European Union also in this area. I want to underline that uh, these uh, gaps what we have for solidarity lines, they arise the succession what was uh, sent, uh, said by uh, Helmut, the Austrian idea, not now, but long far before, to uh, make a ro uh, railways as a, as a, a circulatory system of the, all this area. Therefore, uh, to be uh, brief, I want to say, we look now after the blockage of Black Sea we come practically to the uh, res uh, results of Crimea war when it was just designed all these railways uh, on the results of this war. And I suppose it will be the same uh, when uh, Russian uh, Navy will be blocked for decades in the Black Sea. Now we're looking for the opportunity to go from the main stream 
Baltic Mediterranean bypass Carpathians to go to Adriatic show because the conclusion of Jaspers uh, in July and uh, the last uh, commission of the commission and the European Investment Bank shows that uh, this connection it became very important. We have the rails even uh, having some uh, bottlenecks uh, around uh, um, Budapest. We have additional ways through Baia, through Belgrade. Therefore, my, uh, there can be uh, said a lot of words because, for instance, thanks to uh, Otto Schwedt, we started with Tina a few decades to speak about that. It was supported even by the DG Radio for the last years. Why it was not, uh, was not realized? There are a few causes, but one of them, the main, after the stupid solution of the Bucharest summit of NATO, they broke not only the hope of Ukraine and uh, Moldova to become uh, members, it's also broken the special planning system. It became only the system for Visegrad countries plus Romania and Bulgaria. Now I have two options. I ca uh, kindly ask the uh, Adriatic Shore countries. I know that, for instance, Italy, Croatia already proposed their ports for uh, Ukrainian grains, for instance. Uh, <laughs> the system of uh, uh, priority one common for uh, Danube strategy for uh, three seas initiative for SIF. This is ports we have from God. It, he defied it totally. For landing, land transport, he gave us some choice. Therefore, I kindly ask the uh, Adriatic countries to look for this opportunity was said uh, and for uh, maybe DG region and so on to support this common special planning and exchange of geospatial data. Without that, will not be any design, not only the construction. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Zinovi. I can be short and long, depends on, because you just say a lot. First of all, we do support your efforts to move goods in and out, and as you say, military. When you mention military, I have to say to the audience that now with a 10T network that I showed earlier, there is a parallel activity going on within the EU, which is called dual use usage, which means that the 10 can be used also for the military purposes. Special corridors has been now selected that could be used in the future, and of course, different standards has been put on infrastructure. For example, you can imagine that if today we have on a bridges uh, and tunnels, uh, trucks of, I don't know, 40 ton or whatever, if you put a tank, it's a different weight. So the bridge may collapse. The tunnel may be too small to take it by train. But this is an ongoing activity within the mission with the ministries responsible for defense and the transport in parallel people that are dealing with this. It is called, just for you, dual, use, dual usage of the infrastructure. Uh, what else I want to say uh, for the Adriatic ports? Of course, the uh, speakers here cannot give you an answer because they are not port authorities, and port authorities are independent in a way. But to my knowledge, I understand that Rijeka port in Croatia has been already ready and to get uh, these kind of goods. For Trieste, I, I think too, but I, I don't know, they're not part of the Danube region. For copper, I heard that they do not have the needed silos. You know what I mean, storage warehouses. So for the rest, I am not being informed how it is for the bar in Montenegro and Proche and so on and so on. But regardless of this, we do support you. Any other question? Yes, please. Can. My micro. Thank you very much. Just really short um, a question to Mr. Politic, or maybe two questions. Um, you talked about the new uh, link between Novizad and uh, Subotica. Could you please reflect a bit how long it will then actually take to travel this um, road? And then second question, um, maybe also reflect a bit, if you can, on the new link between Subotica and uh, Budapest that is uh, to be planned. Thank you. 
Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, the, the second section that is now ongoing is a section of high-speed railway line between Oisat to Subutica, 108 kilometers, and uh, going to be finished by the end of next year. We are already providing new train units for that section as well. So, uh, in a year and a few months, we will have uh, around 200 kilometers connecting Belgium to Hungary border, and also we got a big grant uh, uh, by EU and additional uh, financing for from Belgrade south and on to, to our biggest, very big uh, city uh, niche. From the Hungarian so, uh, side, I, as I've been informed, they are also uh, constructing their, their part. And in total, it will be 350 kilometers between Belgrade to Budapest. That's the aim to travel the time to be around two hours. So we believe that will be. Um, it will be excellent connectivity between two capitals and uh, it will be, in previous case it was a dream, but I think the, claim, the, the dream will be true. Thank you. Thank you. More questions? You are not curious? <laughs> Please. I mean, you said we are not curious, fans. I, 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 I have to, I have to contest that. But <laughs> we are curious. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll also follow on a little bit in the same kind of vein. Uh, we talked about the, the, the fast train connection between Belgrade and and uh, Budapest, but I would also then go back to. I, I keep myself still, you know, within the field of trains, high speed trains is what I want to talk about. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think we probably saw, let's say, after. Because, I mean, in, in former Yugoslavia, you had good connections between the, the capitals of the, of the republics. But I, I think after the disintegration of, of Yugoslavia, we, we saw that these connections kind of, you know, a bit fell apart. And now I think one of the issues is to re-establish these connections between, let's say, Beg Belgrade, uh, uh, Ljubljana, Zagreb, Sarajevo, and further down, let's say, to, to the south. So uh, I, I wanted to ask you, because I hear you maybe have a, a fantastic panel with loads of knowledge. I know that you come from the road sector, so I don't want to, to, you know, to, to go too much into fields that may be, be a bit on the side of what you are working with. But I also see, I also hear there's loads of competence here. So I just wanted to have an idea of if you could say perhaps a few words of, you know, plans to reconnect the, the, the capitals, Sarajevo, Belgrade, Ljubljana, Zagreb, with high-speed trains. Thank you. Anyone uh, dare to answer? Sorry? You, you dare to answer? Can you answer? Uh, okay. <laughs> I, would, I, I would dare, but uh, also would like to, uh, him to take a fall after me. But yeah, you're right. It will be excellent that in former Yugoslavia we had better connections between capitals than we have today. I'm not sure today do we have regular passenger trains between Belgrade to Sarajevo, I'm not sure anymore. But uh, it would be excellent if you would have it. Uh, but uh, you know, earlier it was one big country, now we have several countries, borders between us and the different procedures regarding the, the railway uh, technologies, changing of locomotive, changing of the drivers of the locomotive, and uh, of course Schengen between Serbia and Croatia, between Croatia and Bosnia, and so on. So there are soft uh, measures to be done. It's not only an infrastructure issue. Infrastructure, it's easier to improve, to build, to provide financing, but I am afraid that uh, soft measures uh, should be should be done, but it is very tricky how to make it because of the politics and borders and so on. So, thank you. Thank very you, Mr. You're right, Helmut. Thank you. Um, I have a baby, and one of oh, I have many many babies babies, but one of them is the now called uh, Western Balkans uh, Eastern Mediterranean Corridor. Uh, it goes back to an initiative which I made and uh, with Dr. Busek, the former deputy, uh, uh, deputy prime minister of Austria. Uh, and uh, this corridor is, is more or less a revival of the former Corridor 10. And the Corridor 10 was to a large extent a revival of what was future Yugoslavian backbone. 
uh, from Ljubljana, Zagreb, Belgrade, and further south to northern Macedonia, Greece. And uh, this, uh, the commission has put this corridor in its proposal, and I'm very confident that uh, this will come. And then hopefully there will also be much more money for the investments in, the, in this corridor than we had in the past. And I'm very, let's say, optimistic that maybe in 10, 15, 20 years there will be a service which is at least comparable, which was, had already been there. But of course it will probably not be high speed. Thank you very much. I just want to add one, one thing. There has been a study on high-speed uh, railways in this region. Uh, Helmut did it uh, once. But there is also now a new uh, high-speed railway study. I think it was done by CER, this uh, community of railway uh, undertakings, and sitting with headquarters in Brussels. I did not read it yet, but it's, it's pretty new. And they are advocating high-speed railways. What I would like to say is that the issue with railways at the end is, and I will say it blunt, bold, money. Everybody is for high speed, everybody is for I don't know what line, but when it comes to passengers, the railway company say, railway entity, oh, please subsidize, because there is not enough money, and it costs money to run a line even if you have to run it several times per day and so on and so on. So again, it's easy for the urban areas, but it's difficult for some other parts. Uh, we will have to think it uh, within priority area 1B. We are thinking a lot about uh, linking the capitals, a lot. Any other question? Proposal, okay. Uh, uh, Spela, come here. You want to make okay? Uh, no, no, ju just Spela. a sentence. Under the transport community, we are now dealing with some project connecting capitals in Western Balkans with the neighboring countries of European Union. Uh, I think the pilot is Ljubljana, Zagreb, Belgrade. So we are trying to figure out what what do we have to do to establish those lines. Obviously, in, uh, in the beginning they are not commercial. So you have to invest some money, but later we are hoping that it can be a commercial side. And now we are discussing between railway companies how to solve the issue. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have to close. I would like to thank you all. And we have, as a, it's a good Slovenian habit, a little present for our speakers. And Spela is my new power because I'm getting old and sooner or later I have to stop talking to you and to others and maybe Spela will take over from me but Spela so can you please give a little gift to the speakers here and I will assist you and help you So thank you again, and uh, I hope you will enjoy the rest of the annual forum. Thank you. And thank you very much, Mr. Zepic. And now allow me to use a few words in language of our guests. Udri brigu na veselje. Which means it's time for some relaxation. We will take a short break and see you again at half past 11. Thank you very much. Thank you.